holding here has the potential to help save 10 million lives. Unicorn hunters. Esta hora hablamos de unicorn hunters. Unicorn hunters is looking for that next billion dollar idea from entrepreneurs. We're searching for that billion dollar business, a unicorn. RUV Technologies has developed Krypton disinfection lighting. Forte is a tech company that enables dims to create a digital experience. The CVAC system is an air vacuum chamber. Mechanical trees solve climate change. Our technology now has the ability to predict health outcomes and save lives. What concerns me, your lack of ambition. 70 million in three years, that's not much. I love supporting small business, but is this a big enough market? To what degree it's a personal cost for you, and to what degree it's business? Why aren't you already a unicorn? Your gross revenue was $126,000. How are you going to increase that for 2021? <sighs> do you see yourself on the acquisition path in the near term, or do you prefer to take this company to IPO? That out-of-pocket cost is not a reality. Order! Order! This show has a very good chance of changing the world. We gotta get down to business. You'd actually make rather a good prime minister. I think we're looking at the next Elon Musk. Everyone is going to benefit. I must show you one more thing. There's more? This sounds like a labor-intensive business model. Why are you doing this? So what's your why? How many women work at Vast Minds, and how are you including them? I like a lot of things about it. But before you get too cocky... I don't know if people are going to invest. This didn't go as expected. The best presentation I've yet to see at Unicorn Hunters. By far. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. I'm in. I'm definitely in. And I'm going to invest. Let's go, Nick. Let's go, Nick. Can you call my mom? everyone. My name is Hernan Gonzalez, and I'm the founder and CEO of GenePro DX. I've been a surgeon all my life, treating thyroid cancer. Imagine you're in my office, and I tell you, you have abnormal growth in your neck, and it might be cancer. And that the only way to really find out is to take you to surgery, open up your neck, and remove this mass. And you will likely require thyroid hormone supplementation for the rest of your life. And by the way, there's a 75% chance that this surgery will be unnecessary. But the only way to guarantee that a potentially abnormal growth is removed is with surgery. The paradigm of thyroid cancer diagnosis costs the health systems billions of dollars every year. At GenePro DX, we have solved this problem by developing a new test called Thyroprint. Basically, it uses a small sample of a fine needle biopsy of the thyroid, we test a specific set of genes by PCR, just like COVID. And then we follow with an algorithm developed by machine learning to provide a final result. The test solves the problem by predicting if an indeterminate thyroid nodule is benign or not with a certainty greater than 95%. This means that a patient will reduce the risk of cancer from 25 to less than 5% if the result is benign. Furthermore, think about it. Surgery of the thyroid is $15,000 just in the US, and the test will be about $4,000. This gives us a huge opportunity to reduce the cost burden on the healthcare systems around the world by eliminating unnecessary surgery. 
At Gene Pro DX, we're raising $15 million at $120 million pre-money evaluation to finance all activities that are needed to gain market access, which basically means to achieve insurance coverage by uh, companies around the world. Treating and studying thyroid cancer has been my life as a physician and a scientist. And to tell you the truth, I never saw myself becoming a CEO or founder. But over the years, with many successes and many failures, I taught myself the business skills to start and grow this company to where it is today. And if this mission is as important to you and your global investors, I would love to invite you to invest in Gene Pro DX. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. makes me extremely proud to see a fellow Latino representing not only entrepreneurship, but also an important social impact innovation like the one that you are bringing us. You said that you are raising 15 million to take the company to market. Which markets are you targeting? This will be mostly strategic countries like the US, Europe, and, but we also have a very aggressive plan for Latin America and Asia. What is that market size? Globally. So the market side is about $2 billion, but the obtainable market is about 60 to 70% of this market. So revenues can be easily within in five to six years at the, a range of six to $700 million a year. Why does it cost $4,000 a test? Well, it's about value. Obviously, the cost of goods is not $4,000. These high value tests usually are priced based on the value they provide. So it's calculated based on the alternative cost. The 15,000 surgery. Correct. This test is not designed to detect cancer. It's designed to detect benign, so you won't undergo unnecessary treatment. And what is your cost to produce the test? The cost of goods is one to $200. So your profit margin is? Is huge. <laughs> is that why you have such a rich post money valuation? That's correct. After SGNA costs and after manufacturing costs, we have still have a very high margin, even in countries where reimbursement is, will be significantly lower than the U.S. I think I heard you say that the technology exists. You're just putting it in kit form. Well, yes, but technologies today require a huge set of genes or biomarkers that we call in order to test and provide these results. That makes it very difficult to put it into a cartridge or in a kit for global distribution because you need too many controls to get the FDA clearance. On the other hand, we only use 10 genes for our test. So you can package them into a small cartridge. It could be used all over the world and the controls that you need to get FDA clearance are much less. So Hernan, how are you going to protect this innovation? We have a granted patent in the US, all Europe, Asia, and Australia, and New Zealand, and we're only pending Mexico and Brazil for now. And what does a patent cover? You can't patent biomarkers, but you can patent the method, the algorithm, the process of looking at these genes. That's what you can actually patent. Okay. How common is this cancer? In the US, it's approximately 12 patients for every 100,000 people. We estimate that in determinate cases, it's 1.2 to 1.6 million people. And so thyroid cancer is just a little bit lower than the indeterminate situation. So it should be about a million cases a year. Say that you have 95% certainty in the results. Is that 95% accuracy? No, it's not accuracy. So what is the probability? If I have a benign result, that result is true. And that's 95%. So what you described at the very beginning of your presentation is exactly what happened to me except I was erroneously attributed to my lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. I'm good, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. I think your application could also be relevant to, I think, prostate and lung cancer as well. But the, what about other head and neck cancers? Cor correct. We're not focused necessarily on other head and neck cancers, but rather cancers in itself. The key thing is simplicity and availability to democratize the access to high value tests to all, all over the world. If you're trying to democratize it, why is the cost $4,000? because it's a negotiation that is performed with each insurance company in each country, because what you communicate is the value rather than what it costs to perform the test. So if they're gonna pay 15,000. $15,000 is the cost of surgery. Of What's surgery. the cost of getting a test at a local hospital and sent off to be analyzed? Today in the US, it's $4,000. It takes two weeks to get the results. 
With this test, you can get the result in your same hospital within one day. Is that through your U.S. competitor? The U.S. competitor takes two weeks to get a result. And what is their price point? Thirty-six hundred dollars. So for the that, test. For the test. And that is your only competitor globally. Yes. They're non. Unicorn Hunters is being seen by a global audience, and now we have a global investor with a question for you. Hi, here's my question. How did having a PhD and a background in medicine help prepare you into making this business venture, your first one, such a huge success? I never thought I would do this. So this was something I had to teach myself and get out of my comfort zone as a physician and a scientist in order to really understand what will allow us to make a technology that will help patients to go global. Conan, thank you, that's great. Good luck. You definitely have the expertise, but let's talk about your operations. So who's going to be managing the company? Up to now, it's been myself and my team on the business side and the technical scientist side, where I will be leading the medical side and we will bring in new talent in order to do the administrative and commercial side. And they have the global experience to do this? Exactly. Right. How many people do you have today working in your company? Today we're 50 people. We don't only do thyroid print testing, we also do COVID testing, and we're actually a cash flow positive company. We have a very big operation in Chile to help patients on cancer and infectious disease. Okay. How much are you making from the COVID tests? This year, we anticipate a $4.5 million. And what was the gross revenue for 2020 all in? It'll be about $5 million. We still haven't rolled out the thyroid print test aggressively, especially that now we've been in COVID, but we're preparing the market to launch the kit ver version of the test. Are you already selling your kit in some markets? We're already in most of the Latin American countries and we launched Europe just this year. We're commercializing the test as a service, which has allowed us to generate early revenue and create post-validation data, but it's still not available as a kit yet. But you've tested it with yes. patients. We've performed two international multi-center trials, okay. one in Chile and one in the U.S. And we've shown that the genetic profile of the U.S. population and the Chilean population is exactly the same for this particular test, which allows us to claim that the test is globally usable for all population. Fascinating. Wow. The clinical trial you did here in the United States, was it a full-blown FDA trial? No, because it wasn't intended to validate the kit. So we're doing a third trial now that's an international trial where we will use that data to validate the final kit because that will be much more robust. And that's the clinical trial that will be submitted for the FDA uh, clearance. As you know, we're part of a huge global community watching this show right now. And right now, I'd like to take a question from one of our celebrity investors. Wow, Hernan, that was an incredible presentation. Thank you so much, especially for me as an entrepreneur myself. This is so helpful. But I have a question. As an international entrepreneur, is it ever difficult to import innovations into the U.S. market? And just what are the challenges that you face in going like toe to toe with U.S. competition? It is a challenge, but all we need to do is incorporate the company in the U.S. If the data is there, the data speaks for itself. We have clinical trials published in the highest ranked journals of thyroid disease. There is no specific bias of the FDA towards the origin of the company. It's all about the data. And if the data is there, there's no reason for them not to approve it. Hernan, thank you so much. That was a super thoughtful answer. Best of luck. I actually have a concern. I'm worried about the uninsured. So everything we're hearing is about payers and insurance companies. How are you going to address that, if at all? Obviously, we don't have control of how testing occurs and it's rolled out. So each institution will have to decide how they roll out tests for the underserved patients that need testing equally to any other people. Hernan, how did you come up with this innovation? In my routine practice, every week I see several patients that undergo a biopsy and the result comes back indeterminate. All these patients ended up in the operating room and it was very frustrating to see that many of them ultimately had a benign disease and could have avoided it. And we started this in 2006 
And with a lot of failures and successes in, in between, we ultimately came up with this model. And I'm proud to say that a fourth year medical student was able to develop the machine learning algorithm of this technology. Wow. So how does it work in terms of licensing? The IP is the universities. And the university provides us exclusive license until it, ex it expires. They grant you the access to the patent and the IP forever, regardless of the success of your company in the future? We signed an agreement that included a 5% equity stake and a 5% royalty over net sales. So it's 5% equity, right? So they had a strong equity stake at the beginning, and now it's 5% of net sales? Yes, they have a- In perpetuity? If we have the company acquired, for example, yes. the new partner will have- Inherits that? Yes. So it's part of the bottom line. That's a bit challenging. That's routine for these kind of companies because it's routine that any biotech technology will have a royalty indefinitely, unless the acquiring company acquires the, the full rights and buys the university out. And was your competitor's product also developed with a university and under a similar licensing structure? One of them. One of them, they're the leading company and they're located in South San Francisco. I thought you only had one main competitor. Two. And the other one was originated from the University of Pittsburgh. How are you better than them? In a nutshell, we're the only ones who have a kit for global distribution. Okay, so that's your big differentiator. Yeah. What do you think your first liquidity event will look like? There could be an acquisition in the near term or within the next three years, just before FDA clearance, we might perform an, an IPO. Do you see yourself on the acquisition path in the near term or do you prefer to take this company to IPO? I would prefer the IPO. We have a board and if there is a meaningful offer that will capture today's value and the future value that could be a five, six or 10 exit for investors, we will consider it seriously. Ernan, thank you for enlightening us. Uh, you can leave now while we discuss among ourselves. Thank you. I think I did make my case. They asked great questions. It was a great conversation. They had to dig in deep in order to provide uh, valuable information to the global audience. I'm optimistic. I think there is interest in investment. Some of them may need more data in order to feel more comfortable to invest. All I know is that this company has a huge opportunity for investors and the wealth of patients. All right, fellow unicorn hunters, let's dig in and get to business. What do you think? Look, I love a good profit margin for sure, but when it comes to the medical industry and life and death situations, ethically, I don't know if charging $4,000 a test is, is good for me. It's conflicting, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I'm just so torn. I feel a little better about this concept because the market kind of sets the price point. I'm not suggesting it makes it right. But it's this balance of entrepreneurialism too, right? He has a responsibility to his investors. It's just odd to me that obviously he's setting the price because that's what the market will bear. So it almost sounds like there's not really an advantage for him to go lower. Perhaps this margin can help to offer the test to less developed or less fortunate yes. countries as well. Right, yeah. The margins are so rich that it really makes me wonder who did the valuation. It will insurers really pay that much. It's about access, it's about equity. In order for people to get the treatment they need, we need it to be affordable and accessible. And I'm not really clear that this is that innovative, that it's that different. I want to invest in companies that will bring the cost down. I wish it were $1,000 or something, really made a step that people would notice. Yeah. Here we seem to be getting the same product at the same price. It's not like they created something new. And why don't we have any data from the trials? Where's the data? We don't have the data from the trials. We didn't have a clear picture of the competitive landscape. First, we heard there was one competitor. There are two. Yeah. We don't know. We're just yeah. assuming a whole lot of everything is perfect for this. No, you're exactly right. But this is not a retail product, right? I mean, healthcare is very complicated. So it's a delicate balance. I mean, we are here to find investors. We are here because we want him to grow. He's going to face another difficult choice because he's always been a surgeon, a physician, a scientist. Now he will have to decide whether he is first CEO 
of a physician. As VCO, he must run the company. He must be worried about growing it for sake of shareholders and his clients. The one thing I do like is that it does help distribute it internationally to some of the very poor countries. Yeah, me But too. I think he's really thinking of the wealthier countries. Well, and hopefully it avoids unnecessary surgery and it eases the burden on the healthcare system globally. So that's where the value lies here. But is the valuation right? Is there enough innovation here to really support an investment? Well, then I think we might be overlooking something he did allude to. If I have to wait two weeks because the doctor said to me, I may have the C word and I can find out in one day, look, there is value in the fact that I, I may be able to sleep with some peace of mind knowing I don't have cancer. It's a little quicker, but look at the medical industry in this country and the reputation it has. We're just extending it with this kind of thinking instead of let's develop some new technology to have lower cost solutions. That applies to computer products too. A very valid point. All right, everyone, uh, should we bring back our potential unicorn now? Certainly. Anand, welcome back to the Circle of Money. We're going to give you 60 seconds to wow us and the global community right now. Let's go. As you know, cancer has become one of the leading causes of death in the world. Huge advancements in the creation of new treatments have occurred. But choosing the right treatment for each patient requires good diagnostic tools to make sure that we don't harm people. So at GenePro-DX, we're developing new testing that will allow us to choose the best treatment for patients with malignant disease and avoid harming them unnecessarily. I would like to invite you to join me in this journey to improve the outcome of patients with cancer by joining GenePro-DX. Thank you very much. And you didn't even need all your time. I think you have the potential of being, you know, very large the company, but it's in areas that I don't understand well. I still have so many questions that didn't get totally answered. Darnan, what you're doing is admirable. But likewise, I have so many more questions and no answers. I'll have to research a lot more. And then I'm still a little conflicted. I have to give this a little bit more thought. But from an investment perspective, it really sounds compelling. I like the innovation very much. I like the idea of simplifying testing. I'm still conflicting about the price and distribution strategy, and I would love to learn a little more about that. Thank you. Dr. Gonzalez, I'm just concerned about the healthcare insurance industry. They're such an important part of the success of thyroid print that gives me some heartburn. Hernan, you're going to have to make a difficult choice, whether you are a CEO or practicing surgeon. And the second concern are the competitors. Thank you. Thyroid print has substantial margins, cash flow positive, and you're a strong acquisition target. What I'm confused is about product differentiation and the competitive landscape. Still need more information there. Decision time. Waz, can we start with you? Hernan, I really do admire what you've done, but uh, there's too many uncertainties I have and personal feelings. Mm -hmm. So I'm a negative. Thank you. I'm still morally conflicted a little bit, but I know this has the potential to make a lot of money. So um, I'm in for a small investment. I think from an investor perspective, I think you have a lot to offer. And the fact that you're able to simplify something that is very needed in a one day turnaround, I'm in. I think the market is huge. The impact that we will have in people is enormous, but 
I would like to, to continue learning and invest in the process as well. I go to Vegas once a month. <laughs> <laughs> this is a safer risk for me. I'm in. Thank you. I see a determination in you to make this business successful. I'm impressed that you already made your company cash flow positive. And what COVID demonstrated, it's a time where it's smart to have your money in PCR testing. Mm. And for that reason, I'm in. Ernan, I'm intrigued. There's just so much potential here. A lot of uncertainty. But I think you can pull it off. So I'm in. Well, Ernan, that's six out of seven unicorn hunters. Congratulations. That was a great pitch. Thank you very much. I think it went better than I expected. I was surprised to see that six out of seven chose to invest. I thought that everyone was going to say no. The only panelist that decided not to invest is Steve Wozniak. Oh, hey, I'm see you. Your, your presentation really was good. I'm a real fan of, of Steve, so completely respect his decision. I get six of us. It's great. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Let's see yourself. Yeah. One, two, three.